Among the most successful of all of Bolger and Mabillard's coaster models is the Floorless Coaster. Ever since the original Medusa was unveiled in 1999 at Six Flags Great Adventure, the coasters have been mostly popping up domestically at Six Flags and Cedar Fair parks across the United States and overseas. These coasters are all about the inversions while providing a smoother ride than the arrows that preceded them. So today, I want to talk about my favorite B&M floorless coasters. And since the floorless coaster essentially replaced demand for the company's sit-down model, I thought it'd be interesting to compare the floorless coasters to the sit-down coasters that preceded them. Number 12, Patriot at California's Great America. The conversion from a stand-up to a floorless coaster did improve the overall comfort. However, this just wasn't all that great of a layout to begin with. It's short and not overly forceful. Number 11, Batman the Dark Knight at Six Flags New England. My home park's floorless coaster isn't one of my favorites, but I have to give B&M credit for how they shoehorn this coaster into such a small footprint. The first half doesn't really do too much for me, but I do love that zero G roll. It's one of the best of any floorless coasters, and the final two corkscrews are fairly snappy. Number 10, Rougarou at Cedar Point. The largest stand-up to floorless conversion has the opposite problem of Batman. I love the first half. In particular, that forceful inclined loop that's unique to a floorless coaster. But the second half has some awkward transitions that can cause headbanging. Number 9. Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Let's get this out of the way. The most infamous parking lot coaster of all time has a crappy setting. But beyond that, the coaster has almost every inversion in B&M's repertoire. But I think each instance of those inversions is just average. Number 8, Bizarro at Six Flags Great Adventure. The original floorless coaster has the same layout as Scream, except this one is located on something called grass and surrounded by light theming. Most notably is that spiked cylinder that creates a crazy head chopper in the corkscrews. Number 7, Hydra the Revenge at Dorney Park. This coaster is very light in the positive G's. However, I do love the great airtime of the first drop and all the floaty inversions. Most notably, the first of its kind JoJo roll out of the station. That element lasts forever, and I love the hang time. Number 6, Damon Inn at Tivoli Gardens. Okay, I previously said that Batman took up a small footprint, but Damon Inn takes compactness to a whole new level. And if you ride towards the back, this coaster uses the compactness to its advantage to really whip you through the three inversions. In many ways, this is the floorless equivalent to Great Bear, complete with even that pre-drop elevated helix. And this is where Wildfire at Silver Dollar City would have slid in. This is the least favorite of the sit-down coasters I've ridden from B&M. The inversions on this coaster are relatively forceless. However, the ride is glass smooth, has an incredible first drop more reminiscent of a hyper coaster, and some of the most breathtaking visuals of any coaster. I love this ride setting. Back to the floorless coasters, you have number 5 in Superman at Parquet Warner Madrid. And I have to be honest, I was really disappointed by this coaster. I thought it could have been a contender for number 1 on this list, but it has two big flaws. One, the inversions are not overly forceful, and that's an issue when you have 7 of them. The only inversion I really liked was the super floaty 0G roll. But the bigger issue with this ride was the persistent rattle throughout, it made it hard to marathon. But on the bright side, this coaster had some really great airtime you typically do not find on a looper like this. That was the ride's most redeeming quality. Number 4 is Dominator at King's Dominion. This is the only ground up floorless coaster on this list, lacking a zero G roll. And that's unfortunate because it's my favorite inversion on this coaster genre. That being said, Dominator does everything else right with some massive inversions juxtaposed with some fast low to the ground transitions. Number 3, Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. Kraken has a standard first half among floorless coasters or B&M loopers, but I especially love that second half. The dives into the trenches is what gives this coaster character. Number 2, Medusa at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Medusa is easily one of the best floorless coasters. It has a fantastic first drop with some floater airtime and a great progression of snappy inversions. Plus, it has no hint of headbanging whatsoever. 
and this is going to begin a run on sitting coasters. Coming in next would have been the Incredible Hulk coaster at Islands of Adventure. For a long time, the Hulk was B&M's only launch coaster, and I absolutely love the Hulk's first half. The launch has some serious power to it because you're going uphill, and that's followed by a downright wild zero-g roll, a cobra roll that causes me to gray out in every ride, and then you also have two good vertical loops and a nice corkscrew that goes downhill. Now, it's just a shame that second half is really dull because otherwise the Hulk would have been perfect. Next would have been Dragon Con at Port Aventura. For those who haven't ridden Dragon Con, it's essentially Kumba with an extra loop. However, it doesn't have the landscaping or the same force as the original. Again, it's pretty forceful compared to most of the B&M loopers, but Kumba's on a different level. And I just love the amount of elements that this coaster does pack in. And obviously the coaster above this one is Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa. The original B&M sit-down coaster is among the company's most forceful coasters. You haul through every single element on this coaster. This results in a very disorienting experience matched by very few coasters. Back to the floorless coasters, you have number one in Superman Krypton Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. The quarry setting is what makes this ride. I love how the twisting first drop and turnaround go above the quarry and dive back down. And the section at ground level is fantastic too. It's smooth, fast, and forceful. That's why I place it atop this list. So that is how I rank my favorite B&M floorless coasters and sit-down coasters as well. I find it interesting that most of the sit-down coasters beat the floorless coasters that came later. So what are your thoughts on the B&M floorless and sit-down coasters? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Thanks for listening and subscribe for more coaster countdowns here at Canopy Coaster.